In this video, we'll put our knowledge of exposure settings to the test with a simulated DSLR camera. I'll link to this in the description so you can pull it up yourself. Now, when you first come to the page, uh, we'll see a larger viewport in the center showing us a simulated still life scene. And on the right hand column, we'll have some controls where we can adjust things like the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO. Now, when we first come uh, to the camera simulator in this right hand control column, we'll be set to manual. And that means that we can make adjustments to the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO all independently of one another. That gives us the most control, but it's also the most work to make sure that all three settings are balancing with one another. Let's start with that setting, and later we might take a look at the shutter priority or aperture priority. So as we're making setting adjustments, we want to pay attention to the exposure meter that is below our simulated viewport. So this tells us uh, an estimate of whether the photo will be overexposed, meaning too bright, or underexposed, meaning too dark, or just right. So we're looking at the small white icon here uh, and its placement along this number line. So ideally we want it right in the center and that's gonna give us a good balance of darks and highlights and middle tones. So watch as I start making changes here, the indicator on the exposure meter is going to jump around uh, to left, to right, or to the center. So I can see by making some changes to the aperture, I've gotten my exposure meter to match up with good exposure. And once I've done that, I can click the little camera icon and that simulates the shutter button. So now I've captured this simulated photo. Uh, I can see the image itself uh, in the main part of the pop-up down below that, I can see some analysis of the overall exposure, the depth of field, and the motion, and some explanations for why each outcome is what it is. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then uh, down below my camera controls, I can see the shots that I've taken. So one thing I noticed in that shot that I just took is the propeller. Uh, I can't really see the propeller itself. Uh, it's completely blurred out. And that probably has to do with the shutter speed that we used uh, in our exposure settings. So 1 60th of a second sounds like a very short time, but if something is moving very quickly in our scene, it's gonna be hard to capture that as a freeze frame. So if we want to actually capture that airplane propeller, uh, as a still freeze frame without motion blur, we'll need a much faster uh, shutter speed. So I'm gonna click this shutter speed slider and let's make this really fast, something like one one thousandth of a second. Now, as I make that change, of course, the aperture and the ISO are staying the same. So we are reducing the amount of light that we're letting into the camera. And that's why my exposure meter has dialed all the way down uh, to the very end. So this would give me a very dark image, very underexposed image, if I click this picture. All right, I can see barely any detail there. Uh, it's really mostly very dark to completely black. So let's click the trash can icon, get rid of that one, and close out of my shots pop up. So we set our shutter speed successfully. We need to now either adjust the aperture and or the ISO to compensate and get a freeze frame image of that propeller. So let's start by opening up that aperture. I wanna let more light into the camera to compensate for the fact that I'm making a fast shutter speed. So I'll dial this down. And remember, the lower that aperture number is, the wider the camera opening will be, so we'll be letting more light into the camera. And I can see now my exposure meters balance back out, so I'll get good exposure. And if I click the shutter button, I can see more of that propeller. There's still a little bit of motion blur uh, on the edges, and maybe that's okay. If I wanted to push this even further, I can close out of my shots, and let's get an even faster shutter speed. So let's bump this up to say one two thousandth of a second. And then again, we'll need to make some adjustments to either the aperture and or the ISO. So we've already opened up the aperture as much as we possibly can. And if we were to dial this back the other way, 
we'd be letting less light into the camera. Uh, so really our only choice here is to adjust the ISO. And if we increase it, the camera will be more sensitive, which means we don't need as much light to make the exposure. The trade-off is by bumping up this ISO, we're gonna have an image with a little bit more grain to it. It won't be as smooth. So let's go ahead and click the shutter. And I can see there, I get a really nice crisp freeze frame image of that propeller. But I do notice that there is a little bit more graininess. And if we uh, click to the right to our previous shots, I can see those are not quite as grainy. It's not a huge difference, but if we were to bump that ISO up even further, the graininess would get even more pronounced. So using a camera simulator app is a great way to practice and reinforce some of this new knowledge of exposure settings in digital photography.